actually throw you for a complete curveball. You know what you all need to do? You all need to go and, and volunteer at a senior citizen home. If you want to do one thing, if, if anything besides being practical and start making money instead of losing money is what you remember from this talk this morning, please make it that you need to go to a senior citizen home and volunteer for one day. Here's what I want you to do. Spend one day at a senior citizen home and I promise you, you will leave with the following. You will leave that the scariest thing in the world, the scariest thing in the world to human beings is regret. What you will see in those 80 and 90 year olds, some will be happy and they'll be content, but you will see something at scale that scares the living shit out of me. It's called regret. The amount of people that wish they did things is scary. And let me promise you something. When you're 93, it's hard to pull it off. We are so fortunate. We live in an era right now where mainstream media in every part of the world is pumping down nothing but negativity, yet every piece of data shows you that this is the greatest era to ever be alive in. I understand we have problems, we all have massive problems, but they're not as bad as they used to be. As bad as Brexit or Trump or, or terrorism, or as bad as anything you think is, depending on your points of view, it's better than the black fucking plague. We have to put things into context. And if you're fortunate enough to be here today, to know to be here today, to afford to be here today, you are sitting in an incredible spot of the 7.7 .7 billion people on earth, and I just don't understand why you wouldn't take full advantage of it, and it starts with something very basic, which is actually start understanding how this is all working deeper, not wider. You don't need to know in theory how AI and Alexa voice and VR and social media work. You need to start understanding how one of those things works deeply. I've gotten here today because I didn't come to conferences and talk or make videos or build a personal brand for the first 15 years of my career. Let me remind many of you, long before I was Gary V. I was Gary Vaynerchuk building a liquor store by being good at email marketing, at Google AdWords, at banner retargeting, at YouTube marketing. I was a fucking practitioner and then once I built something from zero to 60, or three to 60 million with no money, once I built something, then I had a little audacity to come and talk to you about how I did it. The amount of 23 year old business coaches and marketing gurus who haven't done dick shit in their fucking life that's out there on Instagram right now is startling. It is time to do and less talking and more fucking doing. The Lovers, that's our word, brought to you by BitCut and Fiendtone. Great to be back on Fiendtone. And we're also brought to you by Freedom Bed and Breakfast, which is Ben Stone's new app that he's working on. And it's going to be like an Airbnb for libertarians. You can go find more information about this awesome project that he's working on at hobosymbols.com. Hobo sorry, that's a really weird name. <laughs> um, and you can also find a, a direct link to the Indiegogo campaign at freedombed.lolberts.com. And I'm here with Nick Hazelton, formerly of the Anarcho Yakitalist podcast. I guess you got a new thing going on now. You want to talk about that before we dive into the headlines? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I decided to start a new show. Um, I, try, I was trying to keep Anarcho Yakitalism to be very focused on philosophy and, and politics. And I, I mean, I, I obviously went off that um, while doing that show. And I... Um, I was kind of I was getting busy on the farm, and I decided I needed to cut um, doing that show because it just takes a lot of time to produce a show that you edit and write scripts for. You know, it takes me probably six hours to make one of those twenty-minute shows on philosophy mm -hmm. uh, altogether. So I decided, well, I can't do that um, because I just have to focus on other things. But I wanted I got I wanted to produce more content. Like I stopped doing the fiends as much. Um, and I would, I guess, the only show I was really doing was the Lulberts, like every every once in a while. And it was like once or twice, I think, while I was not producing that show. So I decided I need to start a new one. And uh, I guess I don't know when I started it last month or the month before, last month. Um, 
decided let's do a show where I don't have to edit. Something I can just do on the spur of the moment. Kind of like <laughs> exactly <laughs> so that i can i can just you know turn on my recorder and um and just go and then i don't have to edit like i do a little bit of editing i make sure my levels are are uh flat you know or no, i don't know if it's flat is the right word but level yeah. they're yeah. all leveled throughout and so i do a little bit but it's you know it takes me 20 minutes to do a show now um and it's it's really nice that's so that's what i do right now i just talk about um just anything I really want to. It's kind of like your your show that you do in the car for the for the patrons, mm-hmm. which I haven't listened to, but um, I know it exists. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what you talk about, so I don't know how similar it is. Maybe you're like spewing some sort of propaganda on there that I don't agree with. So well, there's, I don't know. There's a lot of downtime at my work, a lot of downtime because it's night shift and everybody's asleep. So I yeah. just listen to podcasts. I usually have like one little headphone in my ear and then my I could still hear through that, but then my other ear is free to listen for any kind of alarms or lights or anything like that. So I just listen to a lot of content. So I'm always constantly getting ideas in my head. And then like, I'll think I'll hear something, somebody talk about something and I'll agree with it or disagree with it. And I'll end up saying like, I'm going to record something about that when I get in my car. Uh, sometimes I'll just hit record and then just something will pop in my head and then I'll go, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll just ramble on this. I can ramble on that for 12 minutes. Uh, sometimes I'll start off, going for like 10 minutes or like three minutes and I'll just like, I have nothing more to say about this. I'm just going to delete this. This is not worth it. (laughs) I'll just record something tomorrow. (laughs) But yeah, like I'm I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of editing all, all those, all that stuff down. Cause then I want to start doing like jump cuts and cutting out all the sound. It just takes too much time. I mean, if it's your full time gig, like school sucks, which is, which is an awesome podcast. I love it. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't imagine doing that myself unless I had a lot of spare time to just sit there and just edit stuff all day, which is like that's his full time job. So it's understandable. But for me, I like I work a full time job and I'm also doing some other things on the side. It's just it's just too much <laughs> to just sit there and be like, hold on. I got to I got to put my whole world on hold so I can edit all this stuff. I just really like the conversation uh, stuff anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to do something like that, and um, which, by the way, was and, great. And just, it's been just great. Throw it out there. I've been listening to it. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think the interviews will be will be fun. I've got. Um, I'd I'd like to be interviewing more people that are local, um, rather than libertarians, because I, you know, I, the libertarian podcast market is pretty pretty filled. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just decided I don't really want to do that. Um. Let me let me do something that's a little more interesting because I can hear interesting libertarians be interviewed on like a hundred podcasts because all libertarians will do any show, right? Well, you know, we'll yeah. throw out to do any podcast you want, and that's cool. I like all the little podcasts, you know, but I just decided I want to I want to interview um, people you wouldn't normally hear in this, um, I guess, subgroup subculture. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, so if I really wanted it. to, if I really wanted to, I could get almost any, almost anybody. I mean, I'm sure, there's a lot of people who'd be like, "Ooh, you talk crap on Molyneux. I want nothing to do with you." <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm sure I can get a lot of people to come on here, and it's just that's just not what I'm here for. I'm not trying to give everybody in their mama platform. Every once in a while, it's fun to have a guest. I have a guest lined up coming up soon, uh, James Weeks. But you know, that's but that's that's not really like. It's it's not something I'm like oh I gotta have him on because he did something worth talking about in the news. Like, I'm probably not even gonna mention that. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, like I, I, I wanted I, this is sort of like a niche show. It really is a niche show. This is really like inside baseball. Let's talk crap on some of the big name of, of libertarianism who need to be kind of taken down a peg because they're either like scam artists or cult leaders or. Just generally terrible people, liars, um, hypocrites. So I, I think that's worth talking about. So, yep. Are you there? Yeah. Say that oh. again. <laughs> you whispering to someone. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, I, I. <laughs> I had an interruption and I didn't, I meant to click on the, the cough button, but I, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. No, I'm going to leave it in. So I was holding down. That, that's how, how, how committed I am to not editing stuff. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. fine. That's, I, I appreciate that about the Lulberts. And I like people who don't edit because it makes it a little bit more interesting, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, Seamus... Like sometimes, like you're saying, like if, if you're trying to study something, it's kind of nice not to have interruptions, mm-hmm. but like when you're just listening to a show, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, they're like, Seamus will sometimes he'll instant message me like, you know, I think I cussed in what, <laughs> like, and I'm like, <laughs> I am not going to go and listen to that whole episode just to find that one thing and edit it out and then re-upload it to the, I'm not doing it. <laughs> like there was one time where I made a joke about his ex-girlfriend. It was, it wasn't like I was making fun of her. It was just like, it was one of those kind of opportunities where I can get a, your mom joke in, but instead of saying your mom, I said your, your, your girlfriend. And he was like, hey, that's right. just a little, 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 uh, little beyond the pale. And I was like, all right, I'll take that one out. But this is it. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. So what's been going on with your farm? You, you, for those people who are probably just new to this show, you have a yak farm in Oregon. A yak farm. Right. Yeah. Something that most people have never seen. Right. Yeah. I don't think I've um, ever seen a yak. In, maybe I have. I don't know. Go ahead. Maybe at the zoo, mm-hmm. but they're a little bit, they're not quite like endangered. So you don't really see them at zoos very often. It seems, yeah. I don't really know if there are any, it almost seems like they're livestock. That's probably why you don't see a lot of livestock animals at the zoo. Or maybe, I don't know. Right. It's been a while since I've seen this, been to a zoo, but yeah. Yeah. Me too. But yeah. I don't know. Do they have zebus and stuff? I don't know what that is. Like that's just a, kind of like a cow. That's like a, it's an Indian cow. I don't. It's just, it, they just kind of look a little bit weird, I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm a yak farmer. I live out in um, the Corvallis area. If you know where Oregon State University is, that's, I'm, I'm close to there. We're out in the, is that the ducks? foothills. That's the beavers. Oh, okay. The, OS, yeah. OSU was the, the duck. The right? not, yeah. U of O is the ducks. Oh, okay. This is yeah. this is how much I know They're, about uh, college football. But go ahead. <laughs> I don't know much either. I know I there's know an know Oregon State teams. team, <laughs> and their thing is the Ducks. That's 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 the extent of my knowledge. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> right. <laughs> but so I live out there, and we're um, I have 22 yaks in the herd. I share the herd with a uh, with my herd partner Tyler Bog, Tyler and Liz Boggs of uh, Heart to Heart Farms. They're doing some cool stuff up and. Sherwood, Oregon, but we're down here in Kings Valley, and I, um, I raised these animals. I decided to get into it a long time ago. I've had them for a couple of years. They're um, native to the Himalayas. They're like Nepali, and they're called Tibetan yaks. I think is the species name, because um, they're t- typically found in Tibet, that region. Um, they're basically a, a hairy cow, a smaller hairy cow um, with horns. And I think they're they're absolutely gorgeous animals. Uh, just the long hair makes them look really cool. When they're not trying and, to kill uh, you. They're... Yeah, I mean, that's that's never really fun. That it's happened before. Um, <laughs> I haven't been killed, but I've been almost killed yeah. by a yak. But most of the time, they're pretty nice. They're pretty cool animals. They taste really well. They're really good. I guess that's that's the one time you say that they taste good, isn't it? Or that yeah. it is good. <laughs> Don't try licking one. well. But if you if you do happen to slaughter one and cut a piece of meat off, it's it's good it's good on the grill. Yeah, so I'm told. Yes, I still have yet to try it. Uh, everybody, every everybody bitches at me because I don't I don't mail out meat because I don't um, like I should do it just to be nice. But uh, I'm I'm too lazy. Like that's really what it comes down to. I make yeah. the excuse that uh, like it's not I don't want a business that's mailing meat, um, but. Like for just for like a few people who who uh, I I work with online like you and and the fiends like I I should just do it sometime mm-hmm. but it, I don't know how I don't know what it takes I don't know how how much it'll cost or what it's gonna be so I'm I'm just lazy I don't want to figure it out yeah I, I imagine but if you ever come to Oregon yeah yeah like you gotta put it in a styrofoam container make sure it's eyes or freezing. dry eyes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forget if all I that. make jerky. Yeah, if I make jerky, that's my plan. Um, and I'd like to make jerky. I'm just gonna send out to a bunch of people. Yeah, um, I really, I really. If do you want to be try. on that list, you, you I'm on that list. <laughs> yeah, I think that was kind of my idea. <laughs> well, I it wasn't my idea. You already I had so. that idea, but I, oh, I submitted but... that idea, and you were like, "Oh, I already thought of that. I'm thinking about doing that." And I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'd like to do that. It's good stuff. It's really lean meat. Um, is it game? And I think it tastes better than beef. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I've had like deer and elk that tastes gamey. Yeah. I like game. It's, it's not. 
I I do too, but yeah, I don't think that Yak is very gamey. Okay. Some people have told me that they think it is, but I don't think they know what gamey means. It's been like a couple of my customers, and I'm like, you don't you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think they just want to sound clever, like, oh, it's a different kind of meat that's not typical livestock. I'm going to say it's gamey, and then people think I'm, I, I'm enlightened, <laughs> or I'm, like, <laughs> exactly. I'm a foodie, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. No, it's not gamey. <clears throat> yeah, my, my, there was a few times when my mother brought, like, brought home venison and was cooking, like, venison chili or something like that. I've, mm-hmm. And there was a, because um, I used to work in Southern California as, as a carpet cleaner. And we used to take this this road called the Ortega Pass, and at the very top of the of the mountain, there was like this little jerky store, and they would sell all different kinds of jerky. Like beef jerky was like their least seller. Everything everybody else wanted like ostrich jerky, venison jerky. They had all kinds of weird stuff. I can't even begin to re- try to remember all of them. And and I remember just going like, yeah, the, you know, the ostrich jerky is so much better <laughs> than all this other stuff. So. Huh. Yeah. I've if, heard if they, ostrich is good because it's like a red meat, right? Those big birds are. Yeah. They actually have. Um, it's like a red poultry. It's so weird. Yeah. Huh. But it's good. You know, it's not yeah. like turkey jerky or chicken jerky. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've had. I've had good chicken jerky before, but it's it's just not the same. It's just not. Yeah. You can make anything taste decent with spices and stuff. Right. But it you don't. It doesn't have the same texture, right? And then chicken flavor is a little bit different than like mm-hmm. a, a beef or a red meat. So I'd yeah, I'm I'm with you. It yeah. can be all right. It can be all right, but it's never fantastic. Yeah, so I've I've I was listening to one of your Yakin' with Nick podcasts and you were talking about marketing. Um so how has that been going as far as have have you what 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 have you been doing for marketing? Cuz I imagine um, that, you know, people aren't just dying to to find yak meat like they do with chicken or beef or anything like that. So you kind (laughs) of have to promote it somehow, right? Right. Yeah. So what I've been, I've, I've been doing this for, I've probably been selling meat for two years now. Um, And it's been, it's hard. It's hard to do because I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. And that's why I was talking to Drew Sample there on that, on that show. I was trying to figure out. How do you sell yak meat? Um, the way I've done it is I, I have uh, have a close relationship with a, a farmer nearby, and she already has customers, but she does only produce. Mm-hmm. So I've um, every once in a while I'll say, hey, can you send this out on your newsletter for me, and uh, I'll give you twenty percent of what what comes in. Oh, um, nice. That's been one way, and that works. But she's you know she has a pretty small customer base too, and um, so it's not you know, paying my, my bills that I don't really have, <laughs> but it's, it's not enough money for me to really live on. I've tried that the farmer's market that, you know, that season I, I can sell meat really well at a farmer's market. Cause, um, you know, people are going through and they're looking for yeah. you know, different kinds of stuff to eat. They're really interested. Those are people who are really interested in food. You know, they're not people who eat at seven 11, um, no judgment on that, but they're, they're people who are foodies. They're people who, who were really looking for high quality food and, and, um, it's pretty easy to get them to come in. They say, yeah, come on, what's that? I want to try that. And, um, that was easy. That was the sell, um, during that market season, but then it ends and then mm-hmm. I don't really know how to do it. So I've been using a newsletter. I, um, well, I, I try, I keep, uh, I try to get people to sign up on a newsletter at the farmer's market so I can keep, and then I sent out, I have, I did it weekly good. for a while. And um, I I stopped for the last couple months, but now I'm I'm gonna I wrote one last week, and I'm gonna try and start it up again because that is somewhat effective. But I have such a small newsletter, it you know I might sell a couple pounds every other week or something. But market season's starting again, so I'll we'll reboot that marketing system and try and keep people on the newsletter because that's at least to the people that I pay attention to online. That seems to be the most effective marketing strategy. Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm really just trying to figure it out and I don't know. And I just talking to Drew, I, I'm starting to try and move to see if I can, um, cater to restaurants. I've got one restaurant customer and he likes it, but he's, a, uh, I don't know if he's making money or not, but he's, he's buying at Rick retail price at $12 a pound, which is absolutely wow. ridiculous. 
um, if you're going to try and make money, I don't know how he does it. You know, he makes three burgers out of a, out of a pound or something and he sells them for $14. I guess he can make some money, but anyway, that's, this that's, is for yak the, meat? the avenues I'm looking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I imagine if you, if you go to a restaurant and you just want a burger, 14 bucks would be a bit much, but if it's Buffalo or if it's yak or oh, if yeah. it's, if it's ostrich, mm-hmm. oh, okay. I'll pay, I'll pay a premium for that. I haven't had that before. You know, cash in on that foodie. Yeah. But what you were saying about the farmer's market. Yeah. I, you know, I, when I go get groceries or when I need just lettuce or something like that, I'm not going to go all the way to the farmer's market. That's just that's just unreasonable. The reason I go to the farmer's market is because I'm looking for like, you know, uh, lion's mane mushrooms or uh, some some weird mm-hmm. fruit that I just heard about. <laughs> you know, it's it's never because like, oh, I just need some carrots. No, no, no. So yeah, like I, I can imagine, like that would be that would be <laughs> your spot right there, selling yak meat. Because if if I just need beef, I'll, you know, I'll go to a butcher. I'll, you know, if if I'm if I'm lazy, I'll go to Walmart. But <laughs> I'm not gonna go to the right, farmers right. market for a steak. Just not doing it. Unless unless they have age steak, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not um, it's not very popular to do, and you in most farmers markets don't have very many meat um, meat booths. There's a few. And there's there's definitely especially in Oregon, um, this is a somewhat unique place because it's you know you eat, most states have a city that's pretty foodie and hipster ish you know, but um, the whole Willamette Valley, the whole Western Oregon is that <laughs> yeah like yeah Portland <laughs> but it's it's the same way all the way <laughs> around the coast of Oregon you know it's the same it's the same culture so people are interested in in getting local food like that. Uh, I love that Portlandia skit, that first episode they did where the couple's asking about the chicken. And yeah, they go visit I was just going to ask you, do you have like a dossier on, <laughs> on all of your yaks that you give out to me? <laughs> like, okay, so this I, is the I yak that you're eating. <laughs> His name is Missy. I use... <laughs> yes. <laughs> He was treated. We we massaged him every every night for. You're I, I making Kobe yak meat. <laughs> yeah, I. Beer I kind of want to try it. to do that. Yeah, take a yak and just and and treat it just so nicely, like the Japanese did with Kobe mm. beef. That would be cool, Kobe yak. Yeah, but so that's what I do to try and sell, and um, and Oregon's a really good spot to do that. But it's uh, it's still I'm still trying to figure it out, and uh, we'll we'll see really what works, I yeah. guess, or if anything will. But I know people who who sell yak. There's one, there's two other people in the state that sell uh, yak meat, like I do. Um, there's one guy who's way larger than I am. He's kind of where I got the my start. I was looking at him and seeing what he was doing, and I said, okay, I'll get some yaks from him. And then my herd partner, the guy who owns half the half the yaks at our farm. Um, He's selling meat. So we, we're the only ones. I have no competition, really, because, you know, one guy's out east, one guy's out in Portland, and, and I've got the, this little area of Corvallis and, like, Eugene to myself. Nice. So have, have you ever yeah. heard of a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk? Have you heard of this guy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I have been following this guy, like, way back when. He had made an absinthe video. And I was kind of into wine, but I, I didn't really – I was I'm not really that big into wine. I just kind of getting back into it a little bit, but not much. Um, and I stumbled across like one of his videos that he did about absinthe because I was just looking for as much information as I can get because I, I I'd had absinthe and I was like I fell in love. <laughs> I was like I, I need to know everything about this. And he did like an episode and I was like oh he's got a whole wine show and I'd just been following him ever since and then like his wine show kind of disappeared and he was like I'm off to do like motivational stuff and I'm like oh okay whatever. But then I started like stumbling across some of it and I was like, this is actually like not, you know, like you need to feel good about yourself and imagine yourself Mm -hmm. in a pond. It's not like that. It's kind of like he'll tell you, like, this is all about marketing. This is how I'm going to get you from being a small business to, you know, to, to be a millionaire like I am. And, you know, and if you don't and he'll, he'll tell you, like, you suck. And like, people will ask him questions and he'll be like, well, that's because you suck. Because <laughs> you're not you're not in this to win this. You're 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 doing like something for five minutes a day and you, you, you say that you did a good job and then you're walking away and you never do it again. That's why you're going to fail and I'm going to crush you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like he's been yeah. having I've been kind of like kind of learning a lot from how we kind of attack social media. Have you thought about put doing a lot of the stuff that he says? Um, I haven't. Okay. And I may be something I need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm trying to follow marketers who are more 
um, inclined into agriculture, but um, I've listened to some of of his his stuff, and uh, I like him. I think he's an interesting guy, but I haven't done enough. And um, yeah, I, and you know, I'm I'm yeah, I'm trying to figure out how exactly to do this, and I'm I'm exploring different venues, and I'm sure I'll I'll, I'll eventually get to to listen to him, but. Um, no, I haven't done much, but I, I do like what I've heard from him. Yeah, because some of the things he, he's been talking a lot about is like, I don't care if you don't think that Snapchat is going to be your market. It probably is. And, and it seems like Oregon might be like a place where everybody's on Snapchat, everybody's on Instagram. And, you know, just going on there and finding a local restaurant or something like that and talking to them, you know, via DMs or stuff like that could probably do a lot of good. Or getting oh, that's a good idea. Or getting like kind of like influences influencers in your area, like because you can you can do like a search in all of these things by zip code, and then finding out who who are the like the top influencers on there. Like oh, here's a guy who takes pictures of his food a lot. Like why don't I uh, you know say like hey, I'll send you a steak. You want to cook it up and you know say something about it. So say where you got it, you know, and ask him how much you would charge for that because a lot of these people don't even know what they're worth. They don't know like how much influence they actually have and what that dollar amount is for that. And so he was like, sometimes you can just get them, just send them a steak and they'll be happy just to get a free steak. <laughs> Not realizing yeah. that if they were to actually sell it on an open market with, you know, where everybody knew what they're really worth, you'd probably be paying thousands of dollars for that kind of exposure. Sure. Yeah. I have never thought of that. That is, uh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I didn't know you could look up um, area codes like that. Yeah. Yeah, you Jeez, can. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, pro probably not in Snap. I don't know about Snapchat because Snapchat doesn't have any kind of built-in well, discovery type things. Right. You kind of have to like. But Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. You can search definitely. by zip, zip code. Facebook. You can search by zip code as well. In fact, is, uh, Facebook. You can you can target because we did a um, a hangout uh, for it was like the one after Capitalismus, and I was like I'll just spend five bucks on advertisements and we just like it, there was a lot of people who just got really interested. We ended up shutting it down for other reasons, but <laughs> but uh, but for five bucks, like we had a lot of people who were like, this is cool. There's like a Liberty hangout that you know that happens once a month here. They you know some of them were like, oh, that's too far, but that's really cool. Um, so yeah, like this is amazing. And it's for five bucks, we had like. We had a lot of exposure just for five bucks. Imagine if, you know, if you're running a business and you want to dump a hundred bucks in, and you had a targeted marketing campaign, a hundred, you know, like, hundred bucks only for these zip codes. People who are interested in like the following terms, like, foodie or stuff like that. So you get really good target because people voluntarily tell you what they love about <laughs> on Facebook. Like they'll put it in their things. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a foodie. I like eating. I like taking pictures of my food and people volunteer that information. So Facebook can just be like, okay, we know what this guy likes. We're going to target all those ads towards him, you know, but we're not going to target, you know, the Ron Paul newsletter towards him because he doesn't give a crap about politics. We can see in this stuff, you know? Sure. Yeah. Now that is smart. Maybe I do need to listen to more marketers. That's part of what I'm trying to do because, you know, when it comes down to it, the reason why I don't sell as much as I could is because I'm I'm not doing what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. right? I don't like marketing. I think I said that in that that show I did with Drew. Um, like I I don't I don't really like asking people for money. I don't really like. Um, it's just I'm I'm kind of introverted. I'm I'm more shy. You might not mm -hmm. get that if you listen to my you know, me on a microphone, but if you met me in, in person, like at pork fest, people know that, Oh, I don't talk very much. Um, and I don't really, I don't either. I, yeah, I, I, it gets me nervous. I, I find that I think most people who do this sort of thing aren't very talkative when you meet them. Mm -hmm. It seems to me. Yeah. A lot especially of, especially if you're talking about like ideas. I think like every time I listen to a podcaster and they bring up their Myers Briggs thing, it, it's always, it always starts with an I <laughs> like every single yeah. time. You know, you'll probably get some people who are like super pro, you know, like a Molyneux or something like that, who's like a complete narcissist. Of course, he's going to be an extrovert, but, <laughs> you know, someone like, I don't know, Carlos Morales or, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, Brett Vernot. All these guys are introverts, mm -hmm. they, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I heard Carlos Morales say he was an extrovert just recently in this oh, okay. last episode. I thought he, I, we, he actually mentioned uh, Myers Briggs. I don't remember what he said. I thought he said ENFP or something. But I don't remember. But anyway, no, I, I think that you're right. That most that that's what I found. Um, at least just when people share that information, it seems to me that most podcasters that at least I listen to are, are more introverted. Yeah. 
And I think those are the better podcasts because people who have big personalities, I'm just, I just get so turned off by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't enjoy it either. I like listening to um, people who are talking about things that I, I, I find interesting. That's what I find interesting mm -hmm. um, rather than like, I don't know. I like, I listen to Joe Rogan, but I don't really listen to Joe Rogan just for Joe Rogan. I listen to yeah. him because he brings on interesting people. Like I, I like his stand up, and I like him when he goes off on random rants. I think he's an entertaining person, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'd, I wouldn't listen to his podcast if it was just him probably. Yeah, I I usually don't listen to them unless I if unless I like I'll see who it is and I'll read the description. If, it, if the description or the person interests me, then I'll listen to it. Otherwise, I won't bother. Like the, all the MMA stuff, like I don't really care. I like watching MMA when it's on. I, I like mm -hmm. I love watching it, but I'm I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, there's a new UFC tonight. I got to go down to the bar and pay like you know an admission fee to go to go sit in while it's playing and watch it. I don't care. I'm not dying for tickets, but. When it's when you know other people are watching it, I get I really get into it. But I'm not gonna sit there and be like one of those people who spend so much time listening to sports statistics and trying to like, oh yeah yeah I think you know this team's got a great offense but a terrible you know like I, I don't care it doesn't right. matter even and I like I like I like hockey you know and I every time people start spewing off about hockey stats I'm just like yawn let me know when the game's on <laughs> and I'll come watch it yeah yeah. It's the action that's fun, right? That's yeah. that's I like MMA too, and I'm a, I'm not a huge fan, but I like I like listening to him talk about because I like hearing about fighting, because um, I'm a I'm a pretty peaceful person, but I I, I think it's I think it's fun to to I'm listen sorry. to people you know talk about bashing people's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So those are great. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's definitely not a. It's definitely not a, a, a an MMA fight, but they're they're entertaining in their own way. Right? Yeah. I like sports because I like seeing people who are really good at something, um, do what they do. Because I'm like, I look at that like, oh, I don't know what that person's doing, but I like I know just from my understanding of some sports that there there's a lot of training that's involved. Mm -hmm. Like I used to play basketball, so I really like basketball. Um, I don't pay much attention, but when I see it, man, I think it's awesome. You and I look Steve at these people, oh. and your basketball kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, the only boring. reason why I like it, no, it's I think <laughs> football's boring. Football, football is, is just, yeah, it's so slow. But basketball, you're moving around, and I don't think I would like it if I hadn't played it. Um, but yeah, I like those sports because I like seeing people who I know are way better than me doing something that I could never do yeah, it's, it's, unless I put that amount of training into it. Right. And I'm not going to. So it's cool. Yeah. Football is one of those things. It's like, it doesn't know whether it wants to be like an intellectual game or if it wants to be like a really high impact game. And it, it tries to be both. And then it tries to soften the edges around the, the physical aspect, which ends up causing more concussions. Ironically, like all those pads and helmets, <laughs> they actually cause more concussions yeah. than they prevent because now people know they can hit even harder because, because they're padded, uh, and then you know <laughs> they don't do their job. But if you go to like uh, right. like Australian football or like European rugby or something like that, those are a whole lot funner to watch because there's n there's less strategy and just more physical aspects to those games. Whereas yeah, like football is basically like high impact chess. It's what you're doing. A lot of those plays, <laughs> a lot of those plays are kind of like, you know, they, they have experts, you know, who really think about the stuff like, you know, and come up with new innovative ways of getting the ball downfield. And, you know, there's, there's a little bit of intellectual with that stuff, but I don't think a lot of people see it. a lot of people just see, oh, he's going to throw the ball and catch it. And yeah, even when I watched it, I was kind of like, I don't see, I can't see what the strategy is a lot of the time. So. Right. And I think that that's I think for you to be able to really enjoy a sport like that, you have to understand it and you have to be into the strategy. Like I yeah, I like watching sports because of the action, but I like playing chess and watching people play chess because I, I'm good at the game and I understand what they're doing when I see I'm like, oh, he's he's trying to work this opening or blah, blah, blah. Like he's going to get him a mate in like four minutes. Like I can look at that mm -hmm. and I can appreciate it because I I know what's happening. But if somebody doesn't know how to play chess. It's, that's the most boring thing ever, yeah. right? But like, I don't know how to play football, but I can watch and I see somebody get hit. That's cool and fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, hockey has like a little bit of a learning curve, but it's just a small learning curve. But people are afraid to try to even figure it out, and that's they don't know what offsides are and they don't know what icing is. 
So when they see that, they're like, this is too confusing. But it's like, but you'll go and watch football where they have like a billion rules and they have like a million different formations and each one is like more suitable for each possible scenario. Uh, that's okay. But God forbid you can't figure out you're not supposed to cross the line, <laughs> uh, you know, with, when someone else on your team crossed the line first. I mean, that's that's really simple. Or that the puck can't go across three lines. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's it, you know. But oh well. To each their own. Yeah. But, but after you get past that, li- those two rules, those and they're very important rules. But once you get past those two rules, then it's a whole lot of fun. There's lots of people getting mashed against the walls, punched, kicked. Well, I'm not kicked. Actually, no, I take that back. There was there was an ice hockey player. <laughs> there, there, it wasn't a fight. It was he was he was going uh, to make a goal and he slipped when he tried, to, <laughs> and his foot went up in the air and it caught it caught the uh, the goalie in the jugular. If you if you Google oh. it. He was just spilling blood over the place. He almost died. It was actually. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was going to say with that blade on, I wonder <laughs> yes. how gnarly that would be. Oh, geez. That yeah. makes me want to go watch hockey. Yeah. <laughs> but this was like in the 80s. I don't think anything happened like that since. But uh. but when stuff like that happens, you're just like, oh, damn, that was crazy. And then, you know, that's something to talk about. It was entertaining. Like, sure, the guy almost died, but. You know, you got to crack a few eggs if you want to make an omelet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think this. I think people really enjoy those sports. Like, I don't because of the action and the and the, the violence or, or the crazy stuff that happens. Like, nobody watches NASCAR just to see if Dale yeah. Earnhardt wins, right? Turn left. And maybe people Turn do left. that. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, they watch it because they want to see somebody crash or flip or something. Yeah. It sucks. I don't want people to die, but it is fun to kind of watch those crazy things happen. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I know a lot of people are probably listening to this like, why are they talking about sports? Man, that's just a distraction <laughs> from the system, man. And I, that always drives me up the wall. And I keep seeing it all the time. Like, And it's funny because like the next day they'll post something about how they just binge watch an entire season of daredevil. It's like, you don't think that's just a distractionary as watching a football game every, every Sunday. What is it? What is a football? It's Sunday. And then Monday, I think they added another day. Didn't they? So long about uh, I have no idea. Game. Yeah. So I mean like, yeah, of course, but tribalism is a vice, right? Would you agree that try at least for me, like that's been something that I've been saying for a while is tribalism is a vice. And you know, you just don't. I I don't advocate just staying away from all vices because they're vices. I drink. You know, um, Cash Newman has visited me a few times, <laughs> but uh, I mean, but the the difference is like I don't get drunk every day. I don't visit Cash Newman every month. You know, it's it's something that happens every once in a while. It's in moderation. It's fine. Are you eating more kale again? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Am I making sounds? I'm sorry. I'm not no, I don't care. I promise. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Okay. <laughs> you know, you orgo no, into your kale. But yeah, like all this stuff is just as <laughs> distractionary, and, and it, it just infuriates me that just because it's not a form of entertainment that they approve of, that it's distractionary from from the really important issues. Meanwhile, they're binge watching everything on Netflix. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I I completely agree with you. I it's um. I think that, yeah, everybody has a way of, um, I guess, it's, I don't want to say escaping reality, right? But it's a take, kind of taking a break from doing whatever you're doing. You kind of tune out and you watch whatever you're doing. You get involved in whatever you're watching or whatever it, you're, whatever it is. Yeah, everybody has something like that. And I, and I don't think, um, I don't think watching sports is that bad of one. No. Um, I enjoy it, right? I, and I don't. I, yeah, I'm not like watching it all the time. Um, and even like, you can't really watch it all the time. Right. It's, it's kind of hard. You have, yeah, it's only on like Sundays or Saturdays or you know, well, they, they moved is. it up to two days a week, but there, so uh, there's a lot of others. There's a lot of other sport. Well, not every day, but there's a lot of like when I was really into hockey, because I had to, had to back off it a little bit because Vegas was getting a team and then we got a team with a crappy, well, I can say, I can cuss here. A really shitty name. It's the, <laughs> the golden Knights, which sounds a lot like the golden showers or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, James Weeks and I were talking about this on the feeds. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if like <laughs> if there's gonna be like the the ice is gonna have a nice yellow sheen to it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, like uh, but you know, still it's it's gonna be our team. I, I might as well transfer over from the Ducks. So I'm not a Californian anymore. 
Um, so, but yeah, but it, there was a lot, there was like maybe three games on a week, you know, which is oh, quite wow. a bit. I mean, d- just for your team. Whereas like, if you're into football and you're just into one team, you know, you have your Sunday, your one Sunday game, if they happen to play on Monday night football and if they happen to play on, I guess the, have to, I don't know how the new day works, but I think it's just like another Monday night football which is just like one game. But yeah, I mean, at most you're probably going to look at like two games a week for football average about one uh hockey about three but you know a lot of people spend a lot more time watching movies and all kinds of other stuff what's 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 the deal if it's like what's the deal if someone wants to spend you know like two hours a day watching uh, i don't know like some blockbuster film versus you know a couple people uh, beating the crap out of each other or Beating the crap out of each other in hockey, <laughs> MMA, or right. whatever. Yeah, that's not yeah, my I, business. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I just don't care. Like what? Like the one thing that gets me upset is when people act like, "Why don't you know who?" Like, like I've got a couple. Like, I guess it's just one friend. He used to bug me all the time. It's like, "Did you hear about Tom Brady doing this one thing?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, I don't care." Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he's like, "What do you mean you don't care? You don't watch football?" Like, like. He, like they go off and he'd argue with me about why I should pay attention. I'm like, dude, I just don't. I just don't do that. But it's the same thing when you make fun of people for watching yeah. football, right? Like, it's just like, go ahead and have your fun about making stupid jokes um, about sports ball. Um, but yeah, you're just kind of being a prick, right? Yeah. Um, and if that's what you enjoy, hey, uh, do what you want. You're just not going to make uh, <laughs> very many friends doing that, I don't think. Or maybe you will because people are tribal. Um, who knows? Yeah, well, yeah I, I, I just don't care. It's, you can exercise your freedom however you want, as long as you're not harming other people. Yeah, but I I will say that furries, bronies, and uh, okatus, <laughs> those those people actually do need to be physically removed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's an okatu? It's one of those people who religiously that. watch. I, I think I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong. Okatu or okaktu or whatever. Um, it's people who like religiously watch anime and they have waifus and mm. all that other stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's some weird shit that you can get into going down that path. And yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, uh, I stay clear though, that, that, uh, area of the internet and, and those people. <laughs> they find you though. <laughs> the problem yeah. is that they find I, you. I, I think I have one brony on, on Facebook, but I don't follow him. Like, I just saw it, and I was like, well, I don't want to unfriend you. Um, but I, I think there's one there, and I'm not sure. I haven't seen any. I don't see any My Little Ponies go through my Facebook feed, and uh, I don't complain. It's fine. I, I, th- I think they don't died off. Don't have if you're a brony. I, I haven't been seeing as much of it anymore. I, I, I used to see a lot of it, like, all over the place, and now I don't. So, I don't know. Maybe mm. that whole thing died. Did the show get canceled? I wonder. <laughs> I don't I even no know. Yeah. I don't even know if they got canceled. <laughs> I've been too wrapped up in my own little world. Uh watching Ga- Gary Vayn- Vaynerchuk. My little pony right. still. <laughs> uh, I'll have to I'll have to check him out. Yeah, so let's see. Um number of seasons. Did they get canceled? I can't tell. Uh oh wow. It looks like they're gonna be doing a, a theatrical film. <laughs> a theatrical film a what does that mean like they're live people instead of cartoons okay so to date 143 episodes across six seasons have aired and the seventh season is scheduled for this is from wikipedia um scheduled for early 7 2017 so it's not canceled a spin-off feature film called my little pony equestria girls that's the i think that's the one where they turn into actual girls uh rather than ponies which is disturbing um broadcast and a feature full uh feature length film adaptation directly based from the tv series itself has been announced for a theatrical release on october 6 2017 (sighs) this is scary yeah yeah i don't know i don't think it's it's, what so does that mean theatrical release does that mean it's going to be in in theaters theaters? yes yes it's going to be in theaters oh wow so that's kind of i'm not going to see that at least that's not not what you're going to admit right now 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> but th- there has been yeah, people. <laughs> there have been people who who go and seek out like movies that they're not in the demographic for, just to see how bad they are. Like I don't know, um, it was the uh, a nostalgia critic. Him and his friends would constantly go and see all the Twilight movies that came out just just to laugh at how bad they were because they thought they were so bad they were good. It's kind of like that kind of whole thing. Um, yeah. Like so, that's something I would do with Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I've seen one I saw one movie because a girl made me watch it. Uh, and uh but I think I that would be the only reason I would watch it again is either um because somebody um because I was pressured into it or if it was fun um to make fun of it. It's, yeah. This is probably like this may, maybe I'll go see My Little Pony just get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> just go watch it and <laughs> be like what the hell is this probably get ejected from the movie theater for laughing at everything yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i still haven't seen logan I'm, I'm thinking about going to see it today i don't know um i've i've heard a lot of good things about it yeah i've been or it's already been spoiled for me because those memes have been going around <laughs> which the spoiler memes which is that a violation of the non-aggression principle to spoil movies <laughs> using memes? No, we're not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's like been the big thing is uh, spoilers. And I know that people were doing that a lot with um, Star Wars. So I've been, I was really, I was, I had, I hadn't, I did, it took like a month for me to finally go out and see it. Um. But I was kind of aware that those kind of memes were going across. So any like any time I saw something, I was being really careful not to see it. But then some of them were so good. There was one where like you saw like this nice girl's butt, and someone smack it, and you could just watch it <laughs> jiggle for a second, and then it just stops and goes, <laughs> it just stops, and you just see the words like, uh, "Was it Kylo Kylo Ren is uh, on Solo's <laughs> is his father." Uh, yeah, as his son, and he kills his father. <laughs> <laughs> That's so evil. Yeah, and then the the, the, the one <laughs> I saw for for Logan was um, I'm not going to say what it is, just because I, it, I'm going to wait for it to come out for at least a couple months before I do something like that. Uh, but it had like I love seeing these in my lunchbox, and had like you know the brownie with M and M's, and like a sandwich, and like a juice box, and then it had the spoiler in the other corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. So people, our, are, people are creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm going to go check this movie out. Maybe, maybe everybody's saying – everybody's kind of jerking themselves off all over it. So I don't know. So I'm, I'm imagining it's good. <laughs> but people did the same thing for The Matrix, and that was terrible. So Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know what Logan's about. Yeah, Matrix sucked. Thank My you. dad really Thank likes Thank you. Him. Thank but you. But yeah, I don't, I don't enjoy those movies at all. Yeah, it's such an overrated movie. And I, I, in comes the hate mail, and I don't care. <laughs> there was there was terrible <laughs> movies, and and it didn't make any sense. Like the whole premise of the movie didn't make any sense. But either way, um, yeah, like the way people are getting creative with these spoilers are just fantastic. And, and, and <laughs> like when I when it's when they spoiled it with me, I was just like, that was worth it. <laughs> that was, I was I laughed so hard it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that um, I, I've been managed to avoid most spoilers, at least with the the Star Wars movie. I saw, I did see a lot of those, but it was after I watched it. Yeah, and that was that was good. But you have to like stay away from the internet if you really want to not get a movie or a show spoiled, yeah. if it's really popular, which is unfortunate. But you know, it's people, and it is. You just kind of have to take appreciation of oh, this person was clever with that meme, and nah. I, found out what happened in the movie but i'll watch it anyway because maybe it's entertaining yeah so i don't know i'm, I'm debating whether or not i should, should go see the my little pony movie when it comes out <laughs> and if i should should imbibe some sort of intoxicating substance to get myself through it <laughs> to see how long it would take think, for me to i think you'll out. have to yeah i think i would <laughs> but you know like um i had a i had a roommate that was really into it and then they found out that there was like this whole kind of weird sex thing that went along with it and they were like nope done done watching this show uh, like once once it got into like you know the the weirdos who who were like oh i'm gonna jerk off to these things that's when they were like nope, mm-hmm. i'm done i'm out count me yeah. out nothing to do with it anymore 
uh, I had a couple other friends yeah. that were kind of the same way um, online that were really into it. And um, at the time, uh, my, my roommate was like, "No, just just trust me. Just watch the show. I think I think you want like you'll like you'll get it. You'll see that it's not really a hundred percent for kids." And I was watching it, and I was like, "Okay, I see that's that's it's, it's kind of not totally for kids." You know, but it's not like it, the jokes in there are not for like adults. They're not like adult jokes like you would expect from like SpongeBob SquarePants. You know, like mm-hmm. there was, I remember there was this thing from SpongeBob. I never was into SpongeBob either, but um, there was like this one scene that I remember where SpongeBob was kind of like staring at the TV, just kind of like in awe. And they showed what he was watching, and it was it was just like a kitchen sponge floating around in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as like whatever whoever came in like he was like fumbling for the mode to turn it off <laughs> which is like he was watching porn <laughs> and Rocco Rocco's modern life was really bad if you ever go back and watch that you were like wow they let that on TV for kids <laughs> but, um, yeah so but it wasn't anything like that it was kind of like okay I can see that you know if an adult watched it they would at least be somewhat entertained it's not for me have fun. <laughs> like, I, I get it, though. Yeah. I understand it. But, yeah, this, this just My Little Pony just never was my thing, you know. And I, w- and, and I have, like, a little bit of hostility towards My Little Pony because My Little Pony came out at the time where there was a whole bunch of, like, 80s uh, kind of – I don't know what, what, the, what it is. Where they're trying to reboot all these kind of 80, 80s franchises. They did it for what? I know they tried to do it for Jim. They did a movie that was god-awful. Um, but they also did like uh, a Thundercats. It was supposed to be like a two series Thundercats mm-hmm. thing. So it was like this, basically like a long serial. And it got canceled after the first season, so they couldn't finish the story for the second season. And the reason why is because, in, at least in my opinion, is that they launched all these eighties eighties titles, and the demographic that should have been interested in Thundercats ended up interested in this fucking my little pony thing <laughs> and <laughs> no one watched thundercat so i couldn't finish the story which was by the way which is the, probably the best of, of all those re- re- uh, relaunchings but yeah fucking my little pony it ruined everything <laughs> i i remember uh my sister had a, a a few and she had like a set and i can't remember the theme song but i remember listening to that thing and getting so pony, pissed off my little pony uh. <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah, just all, over it. and over again because it was one of those stupid toys. That, that's all they would do yep. is play that song. Yeah, a lot of those shows from the going. a lot of those shows from the eighties were just total toy advertisements. Even like the Ninja Turtles, like the Ninja Turtles, the the toys for Ninja Turtles came out before the show, <laughs> and huh. they had made characters for the toys that they had to figure out a way to bring them into the show. Like later, there was a oh, lot of stuff goodness. like that. Yeah, like. Um, he wow. man was the same way. Um, yeah, he, he man was actually like a toy line originally. It was, uh, what the Mattel, I think it was Mattel. Yeah. Mattel. I should know this because I'm into the, uh, in television. Uh, but yeah, Mattel oh. was, was pumping out these he man toys and the, and after they kind of deregulated the, um, the TV, the TV industry and said like, okay, you can make basically long commercials now if you want, they don't have to be completely educational all these toy companies were like, well, we have all these properties. Let's just make shows for them. So that's what they were doing. Ah. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Which is why everybody that remembers. Makes sense. Go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, I guess it makes sense. And I, and I was just thinking, I wonder if that, like how much is that happening now? It seems like it's more often now they make toys to sell a show. Yeah. Or to just make extra money off the show, right? But that's that would have been what my guess would be. If, but um, that's interesting to know. Yeah, I, I know people were like upset that there wasn't that many toys for My Little Pony when it came out, or at least a new one. But originally, like My Little Pony was a toy line, and then they made a show for it. Um, I don't know if it was true for like Strawberry Shortcake or any of those shows, but. I know Thundercats, that was the case. Silver Hawks was that was the case. A lot of these things were just just like, hey, we have a toy line, or let's let's release it, let's release this toy line and we have like a show to accompany it. So that's what a lot of the things that were happening during the eighties. I don't know if this happens too much anymore, because it seems like a, there's like a lot of shows that aren't really too much too interested in toys that were really popular, like SpongeBob, um, uh, you know, a lot of the Nickelodeon original Nickelodeon stuff, they weren't really too interested in toys. Doug, 
Rugrats, uh, Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life. I don't remember toys for those so much. But I do remember the, <laughs> the ads for, for He-Man all over the place. You know, excluding mm-hmm. the TV show itself, which is a giant ad. But, you know, those, those movies were terrible. <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> movie was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I never watched it. I never got into it. You were a little young it's, for it's that, really, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you were like There's negative how many of my years friends. old? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's definitely before my time. Okay. I hear mostly adults talking about but I had a couple – friends who knew about it i'm like i don't i don't know what that is until i was like 12 when i heard about it um but yeah that's definitely before my time yeah and if people swear like it's the worst it was uh, back then people thought it was the worst thing ever like these are just giant advertisements for toys yeah but they were great advertisements they were entertaining to watch like still to this day <laughs> ninja turtles was probably my favorite cartoon ever it was just a giant ad for car uh, for for those things but i think people f- look back and finally remember things like my little pony uh, Thundercats, uh, He-Man, more than they do for, like, Fat Albert, you know, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Could be, you know, yeah. without without the toys because they were good shows, at least to the people that, that watched them. I was never into He-Man or My Little Pony, but, yeah. Sure. So, uh, yeah, so marketing, getting back into marketing. So, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, have you given this uh, any thought now that you kind of – heard about what I was saying. Cause there's lots of other things that Gary talks about that I think you should really check out. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to do yeah. that. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll probably, I don't, I don't know how I'll find it. I'll just look up Gary Vandercheck and, yeah. um, uh, does he have a podcast? He's got a, a daily podcast, which is really good. Um, oh. a, some of them are like three minutes or one minute where he just says like, Hey, I just thought of something really interesting or something really motivational. And then sometimes he'll do show like a, like, um, a keynote because he always does like speeches. He travels across the country and does speeches a lot. And then he, um, right. and then he also, uh, he has like a YouTube channel. A lot of the same stuff is on there. Uh, and then he has like a, a show that he does every once in a while where it's like ask Gary V where you, if you, if you catch him on Facebook or Instagram and you put in your phone number and your name, he'll call you like he'll his staff or whatever, randomly choose somebody and call you and say like, and he'll ha- you know, co- have a conversation with you. And the one he did just recently, oh, some some girl called in and he just he just wrecked her, <laughs> like broke her down. <laughs> and then at the very end, he was like, "What's what's your Twitter address and everything?" And she was like, "You know, it was it was still good. Like she she walked away from it feeling good, but like she needed to be broken, and she kind of understood what he was doing." Um, and he was like, sure. what, "What's what's your Twitter account and your Instagram?" And she she listed off. He's like, "Great, everybody, go follow her. I'm gonna I'm gonna smoke those bad habits out of you." <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of there's a lot of stuff like that too. Yeah, Gary Gary V is pretty interesting. I think once you get into more advanced stuff, it's kind of useless. Like if you do marketing for a living, it's interesting to kind of listen to them, but that, that's about it. But for someone like me or you, who, sure. yeah, who are just doing a podcast or selling yak meat, this is you know some some interesting things. I don't think I could use it as much just because, you know, I'm basically selling a, a <laughs> you know a basically a marketing thing anyway. You know, but I'm not marketing anything. You know, except for freedom bed, <laughs> freedom bed, <and> breakfast. <laughs> sure. dot com. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> elbowsymbols dot com. I love that. I, I guess I, it makes sense, right? Because it's I now I just I figured I thought it was symbols like um, like the musical instrument. But it's it's it must be symbols like the the hobos used to mark on fence <laughs> posts, right? To tell <laughs> tell people this is oh, where yeah. it's good to stay or something. That I completely forgot is. about that. All right, I get it now. All right, that makes sense. <laughs> I just thought that. I was like, I thought it was hobo symbols. Like I just imagined like a, you know, those monkey things you wind up and they go. You know, <laughs> plank, plank, plank. I, I just imagined a hobo doing that. <laughs> That's what came to mind when you said it earlier. All right, so now that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, it didn't click for me either. Now I get it. Now I get it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it does make sense because. All right, so I'm sure people don't know what that is. We're kind of burying the lead a little bit. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's understandable. Yeah. So hobo symbols, there's basically kind of like a ho- hobo code. I don't know if – yeah. Anyways, um, I don't know exactly what they are, but they had like different symbols for different things. Like this person, you know, like if someone 
who is going to like let hobos in and have a free meal and have a bed to sleep on, they would mark something on their gate or their house or whatever to let other hobos know who walked by. Like this person is good. This person will beat you up and rob you. This person will do this to you. Like this person is nice. This person is bad. You know, you know, this person's got a cute daughter, whatever. Uh, so they had like these little symbols <laughs> and they would like share it so that when they were walking around after they got off of a train or something, they can know like, oh, I could stay. I could probably knock on this house and she'll probably feed me and let me stay and you know, sleep in the garage or something. Mm-hmm. So I guess that kind of makes sense in, in terms of what they're doing with like an Airbnb, which is basically just kind of digitizing that <laughs> for, for libertarians. Right. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of libertarians who like to kind of walk the earth. Uh, I met a couple of them at like Jack Fest. You know, they'll just they'll hitchhike around and and get really? get to places. Yeah, and get to places, and they usually do things like they'll cook for you if you let them stay at your at your place or whatever. Um, kind of not interested in that. Well, but, shit. Yeah. Oh, I'm interested in that. Come find me. <laughs> Free. Yak. I got like you Free can find meat. me. It's pretty easy. Yeah, if you cook it for me and us, I'll let you use about as much as you want. Yeah. Nice. I'm going to throw down a couple of steaks. If you cook it, man, I'll give it to you. All right. So what do you got planned for your next show, if you don't mind me asking? Um, Yakin with uh, Nick. I'm, uh, I was thinking about that. I'm actually I, – uh, I think I'm going to put one out here in a few hours. Um, I'm going to talk about the farm. I'm going to talk about okay. – um, um, I, I think I'm going to – I don't I don't know exactly what I'm going to do because I try not to plan these things very much. Um, just so I'm not spending much time on it. But I, either we'll talk about health and nutrition or um, – um, organic agriculture. That might be the. I was just listening to uh, you say that we don't really disagree on anything, but we might. Like I, I think that your criticisms of um, small agriculture, I think most of them are pretty valid. Like small. I'm not anti-GMO for the fact that or it causes cancer okay. or something. Like I, there's nothing that suggests that from what I have been able to research things that I'm concerned with is like putting pesticides on it. But I know that that's something that you are critical of that the anti GMO thing. And that might be where you and I disagree on something. Okay. I'll just, (laughs) we don't need to tease it out, but yeah. um, So just to clarify, like I understand that there's, there's problems with pesticides. There's no doubt. But the problem that I have is when people say that, oh, but organic doesn't use any pesticides. That's not true. And sometimes uh, yeah. they'll use pesticides no. that are just as bad, if not worse, than a lot of the chemical stuff, too, that's not organic. So that's kind of like right. where I'm like, okay, we need to step back from this and take a look at this objectively and not just appeal to like what I think organic really means compared to what it actually is legally and, and how, it, how it's used commonly. So, yeah. Right. So, no, I, I don't know. I don't think we disagree with that too much. I'll find something you're, though. You're probably I'll find right. something that we disagree on. So, <laughs> and I will fight you, and I will win. Damn it! But so, anyways, um, I'll send you a link to this Gary Vaynerchuk thing that he just recently did, and it's there's no Q and A in it, and it's just him talking, and it's really worth listening to. And I, I, I highly suggest that you listen to it before you record your next thing because I want to hear like your input on that. And I'll also link okay. it in the show notes as well. And uh, so, yeah. So where can people find your podcast? Um, I have a new website. I don't – I'm not on the and-yak.com. It's still open. You can find the anarcho Yakitalism podcast there in the last four episodes that I put out. Okay. But um, I'm on uh, Libsyn now. So it's – I think it's – I can't remember if it's yakinwithnick.libsyn.com or if it's just yakin.libsyn.com. But I'm okay. pretty sure it's yakin with Nick. Um, but you can find me on iTunes and Stitcher, um, a- as well as like Google Play and pretty much any podcast catching thing. You can you can find it. Yeah. And uh, speaking of pimping iTunes and Stitcher, I'm still running that contest. I have I, I added a whole bunch of more extra stuff in that in that bag, ready to go. So uh, if you leave a three or excuse me four or five star review on Amazon or Stitcher. Uh, the funniest one wins. And I actually have some other stuff that I'll be sending out as well uh, to kind of either as, you know, the worst, <laughs> I'll send, probably send like a worst prize out in the one that had the worst comment, one that has the best comment, um, you know, second, third runner up. I have lots of stuff to give out. I got, I got to clear out a lot of my merchandise. So um, you can, you can have my, you can have my, my, uh, <laughs> the crap I don't want anymore. No, I got a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll 
you'll be surprised. But I do have one of those. It's my purse. I don't know you flags. That that's gonna be the <laughs> that's gonna be the main prize. The NR. Yeah. So. All right. So I guess I'll say worms then, because I can say that now. Because it's not a, it's not a problem. Worms. Worms. <laughs> Talk to you later, man. <laughs> See ya. Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the BIPCOT NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. Them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at Lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason, in, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.